now i invite dr revathi uh, to speak on visual fields uh, madam is the head of neuroophthalmology in tony fernandez eye hospital at alwa uh, madam always gives something new insights uh, in each and every talk so let's uh, be attentive to her Uh, thank you, Dr. Matthew, for those kind words. First of all, I would like to thank KSOS and uh, Dr. Uh, Arun Thomas Arun Argis for giving me this opportunity. Uh, visual fields. Uh, all of us are very familiar with the usual visual fields that we see along the pathway. So I thought I will deal with some interesting or unusual fields. Uh, the first case I am presenting is a 52-year-old female play patient who came with blurring of vision in the left eye. Somewhere in her left upper temporal quadrant of one week duration, she was an uncontrolled diabetic, no other relevant history. Visual acuity was near normal in both eyes, 6-9 in the left compared to 6-6 in the right. Both eyes, the pupil, color vision, the anterior segment and the fundus examination were all normal. The, when we went on to do the fields, the field showed in the right eye there was a small scotomatous lesion where you can see this, this one. Just a suggestion of a, uh, an appearing uh, scotoma in the right, in the upper temporal quadrant, whereas in the left there is a definite scotoma in the upper temporal which seems to be spilling into the uh, inferior temporal also. So here there was a suspicion of a bitemporal lesion, so we went on to do an MRI which showed a pituitary macroadenoma. The patient went to the neurosurgeon, got operated. This was her fields uh, immediately post-op and two months after uh, surgery, her fields were absolutely normal. A similar case, uh, before that, uh, a few learning points from this is that when the patient is complaining of a defective vision, but you're seeing 6-6 six, six and 6 vision, the field becomes of paramount. The, if the fields are suggestive but not clear-cut, maybe you should be doing a neuroimaging. Another uh, patient who came to us mainly with blurring of vision, six months duration, and photophobia. This, no other neurological symptoms. Again, the best corrected visual acuity was 618 and 6, and all other uh, Findings were normal except for the fields. When we did the fields, we have a temporal, bitemporal scotum, uh, typical bitemporal scotoma. And the, <coughs> the problem turned out to be a supracellar meningioma. These two are somewhat similar cases. But one presented with uh, defective vision, the other presented mainly with photophobia. Then I have an 88-year-old male came to us with a complaint of defective vision both eyes and he was a bilateral pseudofake with visual acuity of 612 N6 in the right eye, 69 uh, N6 in the left eye. Field exam, uh, fundus examination showed bilateral temporal disc pallor. Field uh, showed uh, in the right eye a superior and inferior quadrantic uh, defect with a clear wedge in between and in the other eye there was a superior quadrantic defect they, it had not yet progressed. This kind of a defect is very typical of a la, uh, lateral geniculate body lesion, which has a by, uh, dual blood supply. If the anterior choroidal vessel is affected, you get what is called a homonymous quadruple sectornopia with a sparing of wedge. If the posterior choroidal circulation is affected, this is it is the wedge that becomes a scotoma and the rest of it will be normal. We went on to do an, uh, an MRI and found the LGB lesion, referred the patient to a neurologist. Uh, there is this temporal crescent syndrome, which we read about. I have not seen a patient, so I just have to take a few pictures from the net. Retrochiasmal lesions typically present with contralateral homonymous visual field defects. Temporal crescent syndrome, which occurs from a lesion in the most anterior portion of the occipital cortex, is an exception. Here the patient presents with a monocular loss of crescent-shaped visual field uh, loss in the temporal uh, field and it is uh, mm, contralateral to the lesion uh, as seen uh, here. The lesion is usually in the occipital, most anterior part of the occipital cortex. cortex. The important point here is that the usual uh, Humphreys 30-2 field which we do may not detect this lesion. We need to do a full field analysis. However, a very carefully performed uh, confrontation can demonstrate this lesion. Confrontation is an oft ignored wonderful test which if done very carefully can 
give us a clue to so many different field problems that we may find in the uh, perimetry. Uh, this, the MRI shows where the lesion is in the anterior part of the occipital cortex. Then there are one or two field defects which are a little dear to my heart because uh, uh, patients usually come to us saying that this patient had a stroke and uh, this is the f and he has he or she has uh, defective uh, vision now when a person says a stroke and you see a picture like this uh, you should suspect that the patient has had two events of strokes this is a typical checkerboard pattern the opposing uh, quadrants are lost and this is called a checkerboard pattern of field effect one field which was a temporal lobe lesion probably knocked off the superior quadrants in the patient's uh, visual field and the second subsequent field unfortunately knocked off inferior quadrants op opposite to the superior pi. So the final picture you see is a checkerboard and this is because the patient has had two strokes uh, divided in time. This is another example of such uh, patient having two strokes. One the uh, stroke produced a typical homonymous hemianopia and the second one produced a homonymous hemianopia with a macular sparing. So finally, all that the patient has is a central D-shaped visual field, uh, which is almost like tunnel vision. This is because the patient has suffered two strokes. Now, coming to the last case that I have to present, a 49-year-old patient presented to me, this was a few years ago. He complained of blurring of vision in right eye of four years duration, known diabetic, no other contributory history. The best corrected vision in the right eye was 618N6, left eye 69N6. Uh, other uh, anterior segment uh, was normal. Fundus showed mild uh, uh, non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And I did a field, it was this funny kind of a field which produced, he seemed to have a pathway of, uh, uh, of remaining field in the middle of uh, darkness on either side. We repeated this field several times, but this was exactly the picture that was reproduced. So we did an MRI, then went on to do an MRA. Everything was normal. So I sent this patient to a neurologist and then to a second neurologist and then to one of my friends, an ophthalmologist for uh, opinion, because I was chasing this, what kind of field is this? And the final diagnosis that we came to was that the patient was functional. These are very rare but we do have to keep them in mind. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you very much, Dr. Devidi. Very interesting field uh, defects that we don't usually